there, listeners. Thanks again for tuning into Sin's Workshop. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. All right, so today we're going to be talking about Long Live the Pumpkin Queen by Shay Earnshaw. I'm a huge fan of Shay Earnshaw. I think The Wicked Deep, that book, still haunts me to this day. I love it. I love her writing. Um, and I'm looking for, I already pre-ordered her newest book coming out. I think she is a fabulous writer. And I'm in love with The Nightmare Before Christmas. You can expect my expectations to be super high. I mean, this Halloween season, I watched Nightmare Before Christmas twice. <laughs> um, and I plan on watching it for Christmas. I, I watch it every Halloween, every Christmas. I love that movie. It's my favorite movie. <clears throat> So yes, my expectations for this book were high. And, you know, it didn't disappoint. Um, there were some things I was a little hesitant about. And I think that really has to do with the pacing of the story. So the movie, not movie, <laughs> the book, pardon me. The book takes place shortly after the movie. Jack and Sally are getting married and they're going on their honeymoon to Valentine's Day Town. Now, Valentine's Town was wonderful. And I think it was great that even for a snippet, we got to see a whole other town out there. And really, that's what's happening with Sally. You know, she's going through all of the universes, you know, all of the holiday towns. But there's a part of her that feels very overwhelmed. She loves Jack with all her heart, but she's so overwhelmed with the idea of being queen. You know, she doesn't feel suited for it. And I think that that does reflect a lot of her character, a lot of her history. And just look at how Dr. Finkelstein... Was it Finkelstein? Yeah, Dr. Finkelstein. <laughs> just look at how he treated... Sally. He just always wanted to keep her locked up. He wanted to keep her in a gilded cage. You know, he was overbearing and he, in his own way, loved her. But that doesn't mean it was healthy. You know, he was very overbearing and he really just wanted to keep her caged up to the point where she wanted to go out. She had to drug him. I mean, so you have to figure that reflects a lot of her identity because she doesn't really know who she is. She wasn't really allowed to figure out who she is. She wasn't really allowed to live. And now, not only is she given this newfound freedom, she's given a high-ranking title that she doesn't really think she is suited for. She doesn't even know how to begin to fill these really enormous shoes. I mean, she doesn't think Halloween Town has ever had a queen before. And now... She has to fill his role, and she doesn't know how to do it. So a lot of her insecurities are coming to life. So this is kind of a different Sally than we saw in the movie. We saw some of her insecurities in the movie, but she was still quite formidable. I mean, she goes on her own to rescue Santa Claus from Oogie Boogie. She's the only one who's willing to voice her opposition to Jack's ideals, even though she doesn't really let herself voice them. She lets herself get drowned out. Which is a little unfortunate, but, you know, that is what it is. It does reflect her character. It reflects the fact that she doesn't really know who she is. This is a character-driven story. You're reading the story for Sally. However, I will say, I think some of that pacing could have been done better as Sally's trying to figure out how to stop the Sandman who she has inadvertently let into her town because she found the ancient doors to the ancient realms like Dreamtown. I love Dreamtown. I kind of wish there was more of it. Um, I will say reading this book reminded me a little bit of that movie Rise of the Guardians you know with Jack Frost and Santa and the Tooth Fairy. That's what it reminded me of, you know? And I feel like that took away some of the originality that Ernest Shaw is really good at. It didn't take away from my enjoyment, but I, I'm, 
there was something lacking, you know, there was something lacking in the story. And I can't quite put my finger on it, you know, I wanted more, I guess I could say. I wanted more of the realms. I wanted, gosh, I can't really put my finger on it, but it left me feeling like not wholly satisfied. You know, I really, really did want more from it. And I can't pinpoint one because I did like the characterization. I did like the growth that Sally goes through. I like how she becomes the formidable heroine that I think we always know. And maybe that's what bothers me. We, as fans, already know what Sally is capable of. And the fact that she's doubting herself, while it does make her relatable, because we always have these doubts, we always have these insecurities. I think because it's so overwhelming to Sally, everything just kind of happening all at once, it's taken her by surprise. And we're getting this different version of Sally that then we're used to. And I think that's probably the core of where my issues are. Because this, as much as I liked it and as much as I did like the character development and as much as I did like Sally becoming the person I always knew she was, maybe that journey from point A to point B just starting off at point A, that's kind of what hindered me because it was just, that wasn't the Sally I always knew. You grow into the Sally I always knew and loved, but as much as I like this Sally, that's not quite my Sally. So it was really hard for me to really, really love this novel as much as I wanted to. However, you know, I did enjoy it. I did like it. It was a good story. (laughs) So I'm going to give it three and a half soft four out of five stars. It was good. I enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed Dreamtown. I just wish there was a little bit more development on Dreamtown. And I enjoyed the fact that Sally kind of gets a new origin story as well. I liked it. It was, it was cool. It was enjoyable. (laughs) So, um, soft four out of five stars. If you want to go ahead and purchase the book, I will include links in the description of the podcast. Please don't forget to support me here by liking the podcast, subscribing to it, and sharing it with all your book-loving friends. You can also become a supporter on Buy Me a Coffee or Anchor FM, my recording platform. Links to all of that is in the description. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and as always, happy reading. Thank you.